discussants have done uh, their own duty. Just before we allow one or two people from the floor, because the program says so, I think we, we must also follow some of the issues that have been raised. Uh, the last speaker has taken plenty of time to commend uh, this Nigeria, uh, Eric Osage, for the kinds of people he has chosen. Uh, for me, I think that we need to make this message across to other newspapers and other Nigerians who are fond of organizing awards. And with be saying they are organizing awards, instead of saying they are selling awards, they are not organizing awards. You shouldn't be purchasing awards. I think we should be frank to ourselves. When somebody is giving an award, you don't need to ask those who gave him why. The reason he got it should be so notorious that all of us will clap for it. If you say Governor Yusuf Wike is the best governor in building projects, and anybody who disputes it is insane. That's the truth. So, Governor Wike, God bless you. We have also had Professor Yakub from INEC. Many politicians will be saying whatever they like. For those of us who have worked in INEC before, I think this is about the best chairman I have seen. And when he walked into the hall a while ago, I said, ah, Chairman, you came so early because your people who conduct election, they don't get to a pulling boot early. So we were laughing and he said, yes, that's why this one has not started. Because, <laughs> because, because we are all Nigerians. And <laughs> in terms of punctuality, I think that's one of the uh, common issues we, we get. So we congratulate uh, this day and those who have uh, gotten uh, awards from them. Those are the real awards that should be celebrated. You know, and I think it's a great thing. Uh, in terms of the lectures, we will have one or two minutes at the tail end for the guest lecturer to say something to whatever all of us have said. Because it's only fair that uh, this is paper we are supposedly debating. Uh, nobody is supposed to come and be saying his own here. So we should be debating that paper. Uh, in accordance with the timetable, the program of the day, the special permission of the chairman, I think we now allow one or two people from the floor to make to raise questions. And it is just one minute. Nobody should go more than one minute. No introductions, no details. Just please say what you want to say. Starting from the gentleman here. Is there anybody taking the microphones around? Come, come. Please come over. There's a microphone here. Okay. One minute. All protocols duly observe. I am a journalist, I'm an artist, I'm a community leader. I've listened very, very carefully. I'm happy the electron is here. There's a missing link. Um, the missing link is that we are not carrying our communities along. The discussion is too much up there. We need to bottom up our development, both in democracy both fighting the security, both education. I've been in the business of committee publishing for 21 years in, a, in adult state. I veered off to become a spokesman to Comrade Adams of Shumole. I went there to have a school in politics. I became a special advisor. I became the commissioner for oil and gas and transport. These are key areas where we relate with the communities. And I must say this. Any one of us that want to bring the question of developing Nigeria, developing this nation together, we must be to look at the critical input of the youth. And I'm happy that Eric Osage has brought out to bring some members of the National Youth Service Corps here. Time because up. some of us, Time we up. are tired and we need to hand over to Time the younger up. generation. Thank you very much.
the lady there. The lady, is it give the lady? her the microphone. A very good day to everyone here present. I please stand on existing protocols. My name is Princess Hali Majubri. I'm a media practitioner, gender activist for youth, women, and good governance. I'd like to add that um, when the INEC chairman walked in, what crossed my mind is how the, the new bimodal voters accreditation system will stop underage voting everywhere in the world. Because if you bring an underage voter to come and vote, that underage voter is not educated, is not enlightened. He or she doesn't even know what he's voting for. So can you please look into that? Then leadership decline, decay, and um, intellectual capacity is actually a problem because of the way leaders emerge in Nigeria. So I just sincerely hope that if the president signs the Electoral Act law, that it will help shape the opinion and help shape electoral processes in Nigeria. And then the youth, Time up. Then youth restiveness in Nigeria Time and, in, up. and insecurity, underemployment, and uh, Time up. Uh, unemployment link. So at the end of Time the day, up. we can find solutions to it. Thank you so much. Please, nobody should deliver another lecture. We had one before, this way. And uh, please address the paper we are, we are dealing with. The title is here. My question is to the lead lecturer. The question, like the topic I see is national cohesion. What in your view is the nation we are talking about? Because my view sometimes is that are we the nationals? Is it the nationals that we are talking of cohesion or just the geographical entity called Nigeria that we are talking of this? Thing? Because one thing you said, you said that the debate should be influenced, inspired from the people's culture. And my view is that sometimes some of these conversations are one times, one times, one, the same people. So is it not right that any of these conversations should build on those diversity? What is diverse in this country are the peoples that make up Nigeria. Some of those voices are not heard. And so when you talk of national co cohesion, are we talking of just an abstract thing or the nationals? Because they are excluded. That's why I always feel that when they say national security, it should be the security of the nationals, not just some entity. Thank you. National security should include food security. Mm. Yes, honorable. Who is, who is passing the microphone? Okay, please. Him. This way, this way, yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Medrito. Um, my question is straightforward. How can we have national cohesion in a nation where there is no fairness, where there is no justice, and where there is no equity? And I think that is what Dr. Kaudi Fayemi uh, spoke to when he made his introductory remarks. Now, and I think that is where the dilemma is. So the lead speaker would like to know how we can enthrone justice, fairness, and equity in order to have national cohesion. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. The gentleman in the black, yes, yes. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Moderator, Your Excellencies, the Publisher. Um, to the guest lecturer, issue of uh, national cohesion and sustainable development and growth isn't new to us, at least some of us are who have privilege to be in the National Assembly and we've also interrogated some of these discussions at various levels, understand the issues at stake. But in addressing this, what my take out here is the issue of marketing hope. Because the despair that we are facing, particularly among the youthful population, the, the joblessness, the dilemma, the quantum of curriculum vitals that we collect on daily basis of two ones, first class, looking for jobs. In any discussion that we're holding and whatever we're doing, whatever conversation we're doing, so we must work out a modality or ways that we will create a platform or create the real hope 
that we need to market so that we can make our children, the generation coming after us, believe that we meant something to them. For those of us who are up to 50, I think we've done an essential half. What do we have for that next generation who want to run away that you are appealing to, to stay in and help build a nation? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, warm felicitations to everyone here. My name is Francis Duro. I'm an actor. Uh, on the one hand, there is the issue of cultivating a new cause for national cohesion. On another hand, letters of the Constitution and the spirit of the Constitution. I'm in search of just one hand solution that cuts across the man at the top and makes the person right there at the lower tongue of the society to understand the dynamics of the spirit of the constitution and the letters of the constitution in search for national cohesion for sustainable growth. Thank you so much. Thank you. The lady in front here. The proper, sir. This way. Are you the one picking them? No. That's why there is no unity. <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask the gentleman on the right. Isa, is it? Yeah. Um, you talk about um, you, you weren't happy with Bishop Cooker's emphasis. I just wanted to ask you: Don't you think that we that sweeping all these tensions under the carpet does not achieve the inclusivity and peace and cohesion that you're looking for, the unity? I mean, if you sweep all these tensions and sources of anger and complaints about injustice under the carpet, won't they rise up to bite you later? You can't, you can't ignore them. Thank Sorry, you. I'm asking you. Yeah. Sorry. Thank, Thank you. you. The last uh, question from the youth copper. Last question. Okay, starting on the existing protocol, my name uh, is Bilu Omome Peter, and I want to ask my question to the second speaker. Uh, you, can't, you disagreed with uh, the first speaker, so I want to ask, uh, looking at the identity crisis that rocks Nigeria, it's very difficult for uh, somebody who is from Nigeria to first of all identify himself as a Nigerian you know, before he talks about where he comes from. So how can you uh, address this issue? Like, okay. Now one, my question now is, can we say we have a true Nigerian just like we have an American, like we have you know, a British or like we have uh, a Chinese man? Are there any true Nigerian looking at the identity crisis that rocked us as a nation? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Where is Eric? Yes, I want so this there. next. Uh, uh, please, at the beginning of this uh, discussion, we were told that this program is uh, live. So let's uh, make sure that people at home are with us. So let's uh, make sure that people at home are aware of the special awards here today, not the, not the general one we used to see. People who are picked for what they've done well. Yes. Okay, so thank you very much, sir. Um, we'll take maybe like just maybe five lines, just five lines, just five lines, just five lines. This Nigeria is an idea whose time has come. So we realize that these days it's not just enough to report the news, but to interpret the news. Give the news depth, give the news all perspectives. This Nigeria is credible, unbiased, actual. We do not subscribe to any ethnic, religious, political, or any primordial sentiments. This Nigeria is a fresh newspaper, in-depth reporting, news, analysis, features, politics, everything in a good newspaper is in this Nigeria. A pan-Nigerian newspaper. A newspaper for all Nigerians. And our name says it all, this Nigeria, this Nigeria. So, ladies and gentlemen, may I have the pleasure to invite up here 
uh, the first ROD, Professor Ishak Oloede. Okay, to represent uh, Professor Oloyede. You know, he came in and left. He's, um, he has sent uh, a, a, a very a veteran, former editor of Punch, I believe, Najim Jima. The citation, please. Go from. Go from. Go from.